So let's start with the first uh, presentation, which is mine. <laughs> Uh, so I will uh, briefly introduce you, you the, the governance and the river tourism management along the Marne River, uh, which is the territory uh, where we are working in uh, our organization, Val de Marne Tourism Board. So as you can see in this slide, we are working on the, a project area of um, uh, around um, uh, 50 kilometers long following the Marne River, which is one of uh, the, long, the longest um, rivers in France. Um, and our project area uh, uh, includes um, uh, 30 towns uh, within uh, three different counties, uh, what we, which, we, which are called uh, departments in France with uh, our administrative uh, organization. Um, so, uh, with this project area, uh, we are uh, going, um, um, we are working on a bigger uh, scale than our usually uh, uh, working uh, scale. And we are, it's really a collaborative project because, as Val de Marne Tourism Board, we are working usually on only on the Val de Marne part that you can see here. but. For this project uh, on the Marne River, we are also working with uh, colleagues of other uh, destination management organizations here, and uh, that's one of the uh, main uh, topic I will uh, I will uh, present to you uh, this morning. So here is another view of the this uh, this perimeter with some. Uh, uh, some pictures of the landscapes to give you an idea of. Uh, of uh, what we are talking about. So uh, the river is really a, a green corridor uh, crossing a very urban uh, landscape. We are in the perimeter of the greater Paris, uh, very near Paris. Uh, the beginning of the project area here is uh, the, um, the limit uh, of Paris. So it's really uh, a close. And um, as you can see, we have a very, natural uh, landscape around the, the river Marne, with is also uh, interesting architecture um, and, uh, and uh, also some uh, infrastructures uh, linked with uh, uh, the management of uh, the river uh, as the locks, for example, of uh, or channels or also. So there is a lot of uh, natural and cultural heritage to, to be uh, valorized in this uh, project area. Okay, so here is a very complicated slide <laughs> um, showing uh, uh, the territorial organization, which is quite uh, um, complicated in France, as uh, maybe you, you, you know. Uh, so as I, I, I said, we are, on, we, ha we are in the peri perimeter of the greater Paris that you can see here uh, on, the, on, on the white line. Uh, but as you can see, here in Brown, the project area is uh, going outside of this uh, uh, Greater Paris area and is crossing a lot of different uh, administrative uh, scales. So um, we have uh, uh, 30 municipalities, but we have also some intercommunalities or urban communities and uh, also a county level and, of course, the regional level. So a lot of uh, uh, public authorities are uh, uh, concerned by this project. In terms of, uh, of tourism, um, uh, it's also uh, uh, quite uh, complicated in France because, uh, and it's a good thing, tourism is a shared competence. It means that uh, uh, there is uh, destination management organizations uh, at each uh, level of, uh, of our territorial organization. Uh, so uh, in the framework of this project, we are working uh, with the uh, regional uh, destination management organization, which is the Paris Region Tourist Board, um, um, who uh, work on uh, the region level for all the Ile-de-France uh, region. Region, and um, and uh, the main um, we are working on very different ways 
for example, uh, for the other uh, scales of destination management organizations at municipality and county levels, um, we are working really on the development of the offer uh, and, um, and the support of uh, local stakeholders, etc. But we need the help, the help of uh, Paris Region Tourist Board, for example, for the, the promotion to uh, international tourism, for example. So we are all working in very complementary way. So um, there is a regional level. Then we have uh, three different counties uh, concerned by the project with uh, a destination management organization. So we, Val de Marne Tourism, also Saint Sany Tourism and Saint Marne Attractivity. So three other uh, uh, DMOs uh, working at county level. Then we have also two partners, two stakeholders uh, working at uh, the intercommunal level. Uh, so Paris, Vallée de la Marne, uh, with the five towns in the study area and Marne et Gondoir with eight towns uh, of the study area. And then we also have some tourist offices uh, at municipality levels, which are also uh, uh, concerned and uh, engaged in, uh, in the project. Also, a short overview of the river management. Um, so um, in France, the owner of uh, the river banks can be a private or a public uh, body. Uh, uh, for the Marne River, it's mainly uh, uh, public uh, owners like uh, the local uh, auto authorities and municipalities. Uh, but there is also some parts where uh, private properties uh, uh, own uh, the, uh, the river banks and uh, and also uh, they have to uh, to uh, to respect uh, an easement like you, as you can see on uh, this slide but sometimes it's not the case of course so it's also it can be uh, a problem in uh, some parts of the territory uh, where private, private uh, properties are uh, not uh, uh, respecting the easement and then you can't uh, go for a walk or or, or cycling around the river. Uh, the river itself is uh, owned and uh, managed uh, by the uh, by VNF, which is uh, our public institution uh, of uh, managing main uh, uh, mostly uh, the the waterways, the inland waterways in France. Um, so we are working a lot, of course, with uh, this. Uh, we have to work on the, with this uh, institution to, uh, uh, to deal and to uh, develop river tourism. Um, and also there is some parts where uh, the owner and manager is uh, Aropa Port de Paris, which is another public institution managing mainly ports, so leisure and uh, industrial ports. And uh, for example, in our territory, we have the industrial port of bonneuil sur marne which is, which is uh, the second largest uh, inland port of the region, which is managed by this public institution, Aropa uh, Port de Paris, and also uh, several smallest ports uh, in uh, other, other um, uh, points uh, and other places in the study area. Okay, so now uh, I will talk um, about uh, the river tourism management. So um, uh, since uh, for, for, for a few years, we have started to work uh, um, uh, a lot with uh, our uh, neighboring uh, um, destination management organization uh, to deal with uh, the river tourism. And as you can see on this slide, you have the river Marne uh, with the, the full uh, project area and um, uh, the different destination management organization involved in our small uh, working group, our task force uh, to develop uh, joint strategies, joint actions, etc. Uh, to develop this, uh, this uh, territory in terms of tourism. So as you can see, the first part um, really close to Paris because Paris is here at, in the left part of the slide. Um, uh, the first part is man managed by us, uh, Val de Marne Tourism Board. Then we have uh, four towns 
uh, uh, managed by uh, Sanseni tourism. And then we have uh, two other uh, parts of the, of the territory, of the Marne territory, managed by two other destination management organizations, uh, Paris Vallée de la Marne and Marne et Gondoire. So we, we are uh, four different uh, DMOs. And uh, as I will present tomorrow during another presentation, really focused on this joint uh, project, we are, we, 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 ha we have decided to, to start um, uh, to work uh, more uh, all together, and uh, we uh, adopt we have adopted a joint start strategy with joint actions to to promote this uh, this uh, uh, project area. So this is this group of uh, four DMOs is really the our core partners uh, at local level to work on the river. But we, ha we, have also, um, we are also working um, with a, a lot of other stakeholders. Uh, so we have our small group, a, a small working group, but we, we also created uh, uh, since, uh, since uh, um, uh, 2014, a local network of almost uh, 200 stakeholders uh, involved or concerned in, uh, in the development of, uh, of cultural activities, uh, tourism development, environment, uh, uh, awareness of uh, the, the locals, for example, and uh, the promotion of uh, natural and cultural heritage. So as you can see, we are involving a lot of different organizations, uh, mainly and first of all, the public authorities and insti public institutions uh, working on these fields. So the municipalities, the intercommunalities, counties and regions and the region uh, concerned uh, by the study area. Uh, also the museums and the monuments, uh, which are, are uh, for most of them uh, managed by public uh, actors. Also uh, the cultural sites, uh, contemporary art centers, uh, etc. And of course, uh, uh, the river management institutions that I present I presented you just uh, uh, there is a few minutes. So uh, public authorities and uh, institutions, also uh, a lot of associations and NGOs. Uh, for example, uh, we are working more and more with the water sports clubs and the federation, uh, also with the leisure ports and uh, also with uh, a lot of very small NGOs working on the fields of uh, natural and cultural heritage, environment, uh, sports, uh, etc., uh, culture, uh, organization of cultural events, etc. So it's a really um, very big ecosystem, let's say, of, uh, of small actors, small players concerned uh, by the development of uh, the so tourism, cultural, and leisure offer around uh, the River Marne. Uh, also, and of course, we and we are trying also to involve uh, the private sector of uh, enterprises and SMEs. For example, um, uh, the boat cruises uh, companies, but also all the providers of tourist activities, has uh, bike rental points guide guided tours, et cetera, and uh, also the accommodations and restaurants, uh, which is uh, another part of, uh, of this uh, tourist offer. And uh, finally, finally, we have also uh, some connections uh, and uh, um, uh, yes, we are working also from time to time with the universities and the researchers. Uh, so for example, maybe some of you uh, participated in our international symposium that we organized in uh, 20, um, 2016. Uh, uh, so it was a scientific event to, uh, uh, to talk about uh, the river tourism in the framework of uh, uh, European capitals. Uh, so it's, we are also trying to, uh, uh, to benefit from the universities and researchers work uh, to promote our, our territory. 
So, as I said, uh, um, for a few years, we have uh, built a cooperation system with the main uh, objective of uh, uh, valorization of the Marne River. Uh, so we have we are the, co the coordinator the coordinators of this uh, uh, of this project. Uh, we have also a steering committee. Uh, we that uh, is um, uh, gathered uh, one meet we, we organize one meeting each year with this uh, steering committee composed of uh, representatives of all the different scales of local and regional authorities. Uh, so this steering committee is very important to have a, a good uh, political recognition, recognition of the project uh, by mayors and uh, other um, uh, politics involved and uh, concerned by the project. Also, I already talked about our task force on river tourism, um, composed uh, mainly of the four DMOs covering the entire project area, but also in this task force, we um, we are we work with the region and uh, the regional DMO. Uh, so we organize regular progress progress meetings uh, to implement uh, joint strategies, uh, also to prepare uh, the activities of Star Cities project uh, and to identify good practices, etc. So we are really working in a regular and uh, let's say daily basis. Uh, with this uh, task force on river tourism. And then also, as I said, we have our big local uh, network of almost uh, uh, 200 stakeholders involved uh, in the different um, ways. Uh, so to, uh, to uh, animate this network, we, uh, we sent uh, regular newsletters and uh, dedicated communication to this network. We organize regular progress meetings, study visits also, at least one study visit uh, each year. And uh, also, uh, depending on the project, uh, on the Q and projects, uh, thematic workshops. So um, um, with this uh, cooperation uh, for a few years, uh, we can um, uh, see some uh, success, but also some uh, uh, challenges to be to be addressed. Uh, so mainly, we can see that uh, the Marne River and the river tourism is now be being better identified by the different uh, uh, stakeholders at regional and local levels by the the, po the politics, uh, the bodies in charge of managing the river, etc., which is a very good thing. Also, the chair, the shared governance. Uh, uh, involving the different DMOs on the territory um, is uh, leading to a better cooperation and uh, a lot of synergies to implement new projects that we, we wouldn't be able to do uh, uh, alone, let's say. And of course, the network, the local network and uh, its animation uh, generates also new projects of cooperation on, on the territory, which is also a very good thing. But we have also some uh, challenges uh, to face. Uh, uh, first of all, the mu multiplicity of very small uh, uh, bodies, small stakeholders uh, involved. Um, also, uh, the instability of the institutional context. There is a lot of, uh, of uh, regular reforms and uh, changes in the uh, territorial org organization. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it can be a challenge. And, um, and of course, uh, the manage, management of the river banks and the river itself is, it's qu is quite complicated. Uh, so it's also another challenge to, to be faced. And uh, the, the last one is that river tourism is now being better identified, but is uh, uh, well uh, prioritized. So it's also one of our objective to, uh, to give more importance and to to show the, the big potential of this, uh, uh, this uh, river tourism. That's all for me. Um, so if you have uh, questions uh, for, now, for, for this presentation, but also for the next ones, um, uh, Alexi, my colleague, will uh, uh, 
uh, weigh some questions in the chat and at the end of the webinar we will have 20 minutes of uh, more open discussion. There is a question for you, Camille, from Dilte. She is asking yes. if there is an online platform uh, presenting the publication and researches made by the partners of uh, the Val de Man Tourism Board and uh, from a university acting in a local network. Okay. Um, uh, so yes, we, we have a um, um, professional part, let's say, on our website, which is uh, mainly a, a DMO, uh, uh, quite classic DMO website, but there is also a part uh, dedicated to, to uh, professionals. Um, and uh, in, this, uh, in this part, uh, there is some web pages uh, dedicated to this project on Marne River uh, with a lot of online resources. And um, we, we worked, we worked uh, a lot uh, with universities and researchers at the beginning of the project, a little bit less now because we are more involved in more, let's say, operational projects. But we are trying to, um, to publish and to, uh, uh, to compile, let's say, um, the resources, uh, also scientific, that we can find uh, on the river. And for example, um, we made um, a publication after the international symposium we organized in 2016, which is uh, published on, uh, on this part of the website. Thank you, Vilke. It, it was the only question. OK. <laughs> So I think we will go to the next uh, presentation uh, and go to Worm and Lazio region in Italy. Alessandro, okay. are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. Alessandro Drago from Lazio region. Uh, I will start this presentation about the governance of rivers in Rome and Lazio region. So I think we can go home with the slides. Uh, should I manage the slides change or? Yeah, okay, great. So the area is covered by, by our project. We have two areas since we have two partners from Italy in this project, the Lazio region and the municipality Nine Heur in Rome. So the target area is the province of Rome coinciding with the uh, provincial area of Rome, which is about 4.5 million of people. And uh, we have over 60 kilometers of the Tiber River flowing uh, from the north area of Rome till the mouth <laughs> uh, to the sea. And then we have a smaller area uh, coinciding with three different municipalities of Rome in the south, the municipality 8, municipality 9, uh, and municipality 10, which more or less uh, have uh, over uh, 400,000 people. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Um, Okay, this is the very, uh, uh, let's say, complex uh, governance of the rivers in Italy. Um, as you can see, we have, uh, let's say, a multi-level governance uh, characterized by a very strong stratification uh, in the different layers of uh, bodies uh, which govern somehow the, the rivers in Italy. Um, of course, we start from the European uh, Union, as uh, you know, um, in the water is safeguarded by uh, a water framework directive uh, 16 uh, in the two, uh, 2000. And so the, we have the, the environmental ministry uh, for the safeguard of our territory and sea, which uh, is in charge for the an, um, enforcement of this directive and has got a unified, uh, let's say, governance of all the rivers in Italy. And just behind the, the ministry, we have another level, uh, uh, which is more, let's say, uh, regional, uh, um, represented by the um, districtal base authority of the central Pennines, in this case, in the case of Lazio region and Rome, uh, which is uh, a body uh, responsible for ensuring soil protection, hydrogeological uh, remediation, uh, and uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, production of water resources. Uh, this basically is in charge for the monitoring of uh, the central region of Italy, so Umbria, Marche, Lazio, and Tuscany. And then we have the regional level, which is, uh, uh, of course, um, represented by uh, the Lazio region, which is a governing body in, in charge for the um, uh, legislative uh, 
part and uh, of course for the economic programming and uh, uh, especially the uh, the regional direction of public works sing, uh, single procurement uh, station water resource and soil protection which is in charge for the interventions on the riverside uh, um, and uh, in the area uh, of course the river areas and it is at this level that we have started the good practice we are presenting today, which is the river, lake, coastal uh, and uh, mouth contracts, uh, which is a tool, a planning tool. Uh, we have uh, started experimenting uh, some years ago involving the different stakeholders at regional and local level, and of course with the uh, city of Rome too. And uh, this level, the regional level, we have a coordination uh, uh, made by the, the, our presidency. And we have a, a purpose office, let's say an office dedicated to the small municipalities and ribbon contracts, which has been created to, uh, let's say, um, manage these uh, new tools we have implemented recently. Um, as we will see, this office uh, is structured in a regional forum, technical board, atlas of objectives and funding. Uh, just be, uh, beside the regional level, we have the city level, uh, which of course in the case of Rome is very uh, important as Rome is the capital, not only of the Lazio region, but of our country of Italy. And uh, uh, of course is, uh, is the main uh, uh, tourist target uh, in our country and one of the main tourist target in Europe and in the world. And uh, he has got a director general, um, general direction dedicated to, uh, to city tourism. Uh, which coordinates the municipal offices, uh, info points, and has got a local strategy aimed at enhancing the tourist offer at the at city uh, level. And uh, recently has been created a special office dedicated to Tiber, and as, as we'll see, has organized initiatives uh, uh, on the riverbanks uh, for uh, the reclamation of the areas and the creation of new attractive points for tourists. And finally, last but not least, we have the Guardia Costiera, which is the, the specialized corps of the Navy uh, performing tasks related to the, uh, let's say, use of the waters, which in the case of Tiber is compared to the sea level. So basically the level of protection and uh, safeguard um, is regulated at, at the, uh, in the case of Tiber is like in the sea level, at the sea level. So I can uh, go on with the slide. Um, Yes, the, some, some words about the governance of tourism in Italy. We have three different levels. The national level, uh, represented by the Italian National Tourism Agency, in charge with the uh, promotion of a unitary image of the country for tourism and, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, targets two different uh, users, the collective demand organized by the Italian and foreign operators in the sector, so like tour operators and travel agency, agencies, and the individual demand made up of hundreds of millions of foreign citizens, potential of current users of Italian tourist services. Just behind we have the regional agent, agency for tourism of, of, of lots. Alexander, are you here? Uh, interventions at regional level. Uh, the main tools is the uh, programming level. So the three years normally um, uh, programming initiatives on uh, tourism at regional level. Uh, since 2001, uh, constitutional law has allowed the regions to uh, legislate in this sector, as it has allowed to, of course, intervene in other important sectors of our uh, ordinary life, like health or environment. Uh, we, we have started to um, let's say, um, um, make laws on, on, on tourism and, uh, of course, even uh, to, uh, let's say, um, introduce areas of competence, uh, uh, regulation of tourist businesses and professions, creation of the National Tourist Conference and the promotion of tourist rights. Um, then we have the city level, uh, which in the case of Rome is represented by the, the Department of, uh, of Tourism, uh, um, which is basically, um, a, um, his main task is to, to promote the image of Rome in Italy and abroad, to the participation in fairs, events, uh, organization of communication campaigns, meetings and conferences, 
and uh, it also manages at local level uh, the reception activities uh, with info points for tourists uh, in different areas, especially in the city center of Rome, which is the most attractive area and the most visited areas uh, in, the, in the town. Uh, so go on, please. Um, it changes slide, okay. Uh, river tourist strategies. Well, uh, I have to say that um, differently from the case of uh, Val de Marna, uh, we don't have, uh, um, let's say, a unified strategy in the, in, in, on tourism. Since uh, uh, we have, as you can see from these different images, a uh, very important and interesting uh, intervention on river tourism and the attractiveness, but uh, these are uh, in the, let's say, uh, in the coordination now, because uh, we can say that in the last five years, uh, the city of Rome and the Lazio region have started um, different initiatives as, a, as the um, uh, contract, uh, river contract in the case of the, the Lazio region, and in the creation of new park uh, uh, on the riverside uh, in the case of Rome. Uh, which are now uh, being coordinated, finding, a, let's say, a coordination uh, among these different bodies, but uh, uh, have started uh, in an individual initiatives in the last five years. So we have, uh, from one side, uh, um, a planning tool in the case of the region, and we have uh, individual initiatives in the case of, of the city of Rome. Um, uh, of course, both uh, have been sponsored and, uh, let's say, disseminated at the regional and local level. So if you can go on, please, with the next slide. Uh, the river contrast of Lazio region. So we come to the, to the focus of my presentation. Uh, what is a river contract? Uh, the river contract is a legal protocol for the environmental regeneration of the catchment area of a water course. So basically it is a, um, a programming tool, a, particip a participatory tool uh, towards the citizenship and various stakeholders aimed at uh, enhancing the river side uh, we have in our region. So is of course uh, um, thought for all the rivers we do have in our regions and uh, of course the, the, the Tiber River is the most important one. And um, as you can see from the Second World Water Forum, the river contracts are defined as an adoption of a system of rules in which the criteria of public utility, economic performance, social value, environmental sustainability intervene equally in the search for effective solutions for the redevelopment of a river basin. Where do they come from? Well, we have to say that uh, France was the first one to, to, uh, to define uh, this new uh, programming tool in the early 80s. And uh, immediately after, they spread in uh, Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Uh, in France, they were mainly voluntary environmental based on a consultation between entities and between planning and programming levels and on the involvement of local communities linked to the information and consultative, consultative phases. While in Italy, they spread in regions, as I said, since 2001, uh, regions acquired new uh, functions from the state uh, as the, the environmental one and the uh, programming level in the tourism. So the regions started to, in different period, to organize this uh, and to transpose these, uh, let's say, new uh, um, uh, programming tool for the enhancement of the, re the, the riverside uh, areas. Uh, so we can say that in a way uh, the Contra de Rivière, which is the first, uh, uh, let's say, project created on the river contrast, has been one of the first uh, good practice uh, taken uh, from different countries, not just Italy, uh, from France. So it's, it's, let's say this is, uh, has been um, uh, like, you know, one of the first uh, case of uh, transferring good practices from uh, good practice from one country to another. So if we can go on with the slide. So uh, the river contracts of Lazio region, uh, we have uh, a national legislation in uh, the environmental decree uh, made in 2006, uh, the Codice dell'Ambiente, which foresees the river contracts as a voluntary strategic and participatory planning tool aimed at integrated management of the river basin and the sub-basin policies, the protection, enhancement, the requalification of water resources and connected environments, safeguarding from hydraulic risk, sustainable management, 
of natural and cerebral landscape and hydrological risks contributing to the local development of these areas. We have to take into account uh, that uh, the river basin and especially the riverside uh, uh, in, uh, in our region uh, and especially in the big towns like Rome, unfortunately have been uh, uh, abandoned for, uh, for ages, let's say, and uh, they are in a state which is not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, very safe and sometimes really uh, risky. Uh, there are some, um, uh, I don't know, uh, discharge, like uh, uh, sometimes there are places where um, there is a really redundant areas uh, uh, which needs to be recached. So uh, the river contracts have been represented for us uh, a tool, an initiatory tool uh, to uh, recatchment these areas which have been abandoned for ages. And uh, so it is a tool uh, intended to uh, renaturalize uh, the, um, the riverside areas, which are very important from uh, an, an environmental point of view, and of course, from a strategic point of view for the exploitation of sustainable tourism along our cities. Uh, the Lazio region uh, with the regional law in 2016 uh, started to promote, to promote the river, lake, and coastal contrast in our region. So if you can go on with the slide. Yes, and Alessandro? Yeah. Five minutes maximum. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the regional governance is represented of the river contrast by three different levels. So we have an office dedicated to small municipalities and river contrast. So we have a regional forum of river, lake, mountain, coastal contrast, chaired by the, the, the representative of the office above. And we have a technical table of river, lake, mountain con cost contracts, uh, uh, which of course is organized by the Lazio region uh, with the different subjects I have mentioned in the slides before, like the, um, let's say, the Central Pennine Hydrological District and the small municipalities. And uh, of course, this uh, technical table is aimed to uh, identify new needs and propose new projects. Please go on. Uh, what we have done so far with the regional contracts, uh, we have made a call for uh, 1.5 million euros uh, to fund uh, uh, projects on the river uh, side areas uh, uh, by the municipalities. Uh, so we have, uh, let's say, allocated uh, uh, most of these funds to, uh, um, to finance uh, the drafting of new uh, projects. Uh, let's say uh, sustainable projects of tourism of uh, uh, even just for reclaim the areas so to clean them up to catch them up and to propose new uh, kind of development and um, part of this money has been recently allocated to another call uh, dedicated to the river councils for children uh, meaning environmental education and specifically target on the ecosystem existing in the riverside uh, areas. Uh, please go on. I've almost finished. Okay, uh, it's very important for the river contrast to be recognized as a planning tool in the regional planning. As I said before, the Lazio region, as any other regions in Italy, is the regional planning, is a legislative uh, authority. So it is important for this kind of uh, tool to be recognized within the legislative, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, scenario of our region and in the environmental planning. It's very important because this means that uh, this uh, tool can be used uh, even as uh, uh, an economic uh, uh, source of intervention. Let's go on, please. So the last uh, uh, slide is about the developments and opportunities. Uh, these uh, river contracts are very important for us as a, um, a regional sustainable development tool in the strategy programming of our region. Uh, and uh, we have imagined the future of these tools as, a, um, let's say, a leverage instrument for the recovery fund, European projects and programs as Interreg, and uh, the reward mechanism to finance projects and action that fall under the river wetland and land contracts. I think I've finished. Thank you, Alessandro. Well, uh, I think there is no question on the chat for now, so we will go to the next uh, presentation and maybe at the end, if you have, uh, if you would like to, to know more about uh, Lazio region uh, governance, uh, we will have the opportunity to, to discuss. Okay. So, 
thank you, Alessandro, again. Yeah, and uh, we will now go in Germany, in Hamburg, with uh, Tanya. Tanya, are you ready? Ah, now. Okay. Yeah, hello from Hamburg. Um, now for something completely different, um, because, um, yes, maybe first I introduce myself. Um, my name is Tanja Blätter. I'm from the office of Hamburg Metropolitan Region. Um, so not from the city of Hamburg alone, um, but um, we, are, so to speak, we are um, working with the whole metropolitan region, which is very huge. You will see this on the next slide. Um, and uh, as you can see, um, this is Hamburg Metropolitan Region, um, and Hamburg is right in the center. Um, and uh, the blue circle, this is roughly the Elbe River. It, so you see it flows from the east, southeast to the northwest of the Hamburg Metropolitan Region. And is, this region has 5.5 million inhabitants to give you an impression of how, of how big it is. And the Elbe River in our region is 272 kilometers long. So quite a different scale. Um, so, and uh, we have, as you can also see, maybe four federal states, one of them being Hamburg, which is a city state. And we have three different uh, large uh, states, um, which are Schleswig-Holstein to the north, and then Lower Saxony to the south, and Mecklenburg Western Pomerania to the east. Um, so, and um, each of these states um, has their own tourism board, and each of this, these states have their own legislative power. Um, so, um, as you know, um, Germany is much less centralized. Um, and also tourism and many things are are organized on a very local level. So, and um, you can see that the also um, the Elbe is um, not only very long in our region, but it's also, you can almost say split in half. You can see this orange dot on the map. Um, this is, it's, it's moved a bit, um, I'm sorry, but it's um, supposed to be, yeah, about there, just east of Hamburg. It's the city of Gestacht, um, and from there on westwards, the Elbe is a tidal river. So it's uh, it's um, subject to the tides, um, which is quite important also for the touristic use of the River Elbe. Um, and also, most importantly, it's a federal waterway. You know that Hamburg has a very large port, the, th the third uh, largest port in Europe, and um, or the second largest even after Rotterdam, I think. And so it's um, it's uh, basically many things or even most things are are uh, subjected under the under the port uh, use. Um, for as for example, right at the moment, um, the Lower Elbe from Hamburg to um, to the North Sea is being deepened again to uh, enable even bigger container freighters to reach Hamburg port. So in this, um, as um, Monika Rulle will know, who is also to here today, um, he, he, she uh, represents one of the tourism districts, districts on the Lower Elbe. Um, this has consequences al also for tourism, of course. So, but um, the waterway, um, the Elbe is a federal waterway in all the region. So next slide, please. <clears throat> so, um, Hamburg metropolitan region, as I said, is a, a huge region. It's Hamburg is the second biggest city in Germany, and um, the region is also the second largest. It's uh, a huge area. Um, um, it's, as I said, it's um, comprised of the city of Hamburg and federal states. And also we have a lot of districts. And um, in Hamburg metropolitan region, we have four federal state, so to speak, um, touristic brands, but we also have about 20 regional tourism organizations on the district level, but we have many, many more on, on local levels, which also play an important role. And along the Elbe River, there are 11 destination marketing and management organizations on district level alone. Um, they are all active, they have um, their own strategies, they put a different emphasis on the River Elbe. Some, for some it's really important, for some it's less important, depending also on 
how much of the Elbe is in their area, um, but there is no overarching um, strategy for the Elbe River in this huge region. Um, and on the right, you can see in this, um, no, stop, in the green box, um, we have some best practices that we will also present to you during the next, to, uh, tomorrow, actually, um, which um, are the Kurs Elbe project, then the Elbe cycle path, um, then our day trip tourism campaign, and also our urban nature event, which took part in on the Elbe River a couple of years ago. Next, please. Here you have the map, the tourist map, so to speak, um, where you can uh, see um, the red dots are all the um, district um, level um, destination management organizations and also the federal states organizations. So you can see that it's quite a diverse um, landscape. And um, yes, and it, 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 I would love to have something like uh, in the Man area where you have um, a collaboration um, for the for the river alone, but this exists a little bit. Well, as I said, the Kurs Elbe project, but I think it is much less um, official or has much less um, authority than I think, as I understood from from um, from Camille's um, presentation earlier, that her has. So it would be quite interesting to hear more about how. Well, and it was interesting to hear more about um, how it is, it is actually organized in Valdemar, but I think it's probably not as easily transferable to, to our region because, as I said, it's quite different in Germany. Next, please. So, um, as I said, the Elbe is one of the most important and largest rivers in, Germany's, in Germany, and it um, is um, in our region 200 and roughly 270 kilometers long. Um, it's as a federal waterway, it is managed by the Federal Waterways and Shipping Administration, um, which is um, a state uh, from, from the German state um, and is navigated by around 70,000 ships annually, of which about 40,000 call at the port of Hamburg. And, and then there's also a, a canal to the Baltic Sea, which is also very important. and. Um, as I said, the port of Hamburg is the largest German port and is also, of course, for this reason, a lot of things um, are, yeah, you know, the port is the most important thing in our region, let's say, and um, tourism is not as important. So tourism often suffers from from what is done in order to keep the port going and, and yeah. So, um, and all federal states control their own sections of the River Elbe them, themselves. Water authorities regulate, manage, and operate the infrastructures, which is also important because the infrastructures are also used by tourism, for tourism, of course. If you have a boat and the, the lock is not working anymore because the water authorities um, don't, um, yeah, don't operate it or don't manage it um, accordingly, you can't use it. Or another problem I will come to later again um, is also the, the sediment in the Elbe which um, is by the tidal water is being, um, um, what do you, I just like the word, is um, getting into the, into the, into the rivers, the smaller rivers, um, and so that the smaller rivers are, can't be, are not uh, boatable anymore, so it can't use, be used for tourist, touristic boating, and for that reason also, um, as I said, um, the uh, the waterway character of the Elbe um, poses huge challenges for tourism in the area, but also, of, of course, in Hamburg and also for the region, many chances because it's also, of course, a touristic asset, the big ships and, you know, the maritime time history. So it's not only bad. <laughs> um, so um, in Hamburg, the Hamburg Port Authority manages um, uh, the, the port area. Um, and it's the central port point of contact contact for all issues relating to water and landside infrastructure. And also nature conservation authorities manage and preserve protected areas of which we have many along the Elbe. And many of them are also um, um, areas that are compensational areas measures, um, for example, for this, um, what I was talking about, the, the current deepening of the River Elbe. This, um, 
demands comp compensational measures, which also then maybe um, leads to um, uh, new preservation areas, which then hinders tourism, touristic use. Um, yeah, so um, to sum up, um, there's a conflict between the economic, traffic and touristic uses um, in our region, and also a conflict between preservation and tourism. Of course, the accessibility of shores and islands in the Elbe, for example, is limited. Next, please. Um, um, to tourism management in Germany, um, unlike other European countries, we don't have a tourism ministry in Germany. Um, um, instead, the Elbe, or tourism, and also then the Elbe is dealt with differently in the federal and regional strategies. So there's no German strategy for the whole Elbe, River Elbe, for example. And there's also, at least in Hamburg, and I think and also in the other, um, in the other federal states in our region, there is no river tourism strategy um, as such. So um, the river is there and it plays a role and the assets along the Elbe are included into the marketing under the different headlines that, that may be important um, in the regions, but they are, there's no real marketing for the Elbe as such in many regions. Or as I said, in Hamburg, it's the maritime or the cruise. Um, um, but um, or maybe the culture because the um, famous opera house and new opera house is um, right on the Elbe, but um, it's um, there's no strategy. And also the Elbe region, and when we compare it to other um, more more um, yeah maybe more more well known. Um, tourism brands in our region, like the North Sea or the Baltic Seas or the Lüneburg Heath, um, the, region has, the Elbe has not really reached its um, potential to become a top tourist destination, according to our view. <clears throat> okay, the rest I think I said already, and um, we have some good examples, and from those I have some... Next slide, please. Oops, yeah. So um, there are some examples of some organizations or projects which actually um, try and give an overview of larger regions than just on district level or on DMO level. One of them is the Maritime Landscape Lower Elbe, which has is, but is not a touristic organization, but has actually a narrower focus, which is the Maritime um, Heritage, actually. And but they also. Um, as you can see on the top left um, picture, they also give an overview of the sport boat marinas in the lo lower Elbe and its tributaries. So there are some overviews or the nature experience on, in the lower Elbe region, as you can see on the top right. And of course, um, you have heard of the Kurs Elbe and you will hear about it more tomorrow. The Kurs Elbe project from Hamburg Metropolitan Region, which is also trying to have a wider view um, on on what is um, actually happening or what is what is available in a larger area. Next, please. So um, I think I will not go through all of this, um, but uh, I put it in the slides for you also to read, because this is really the tourism structure in in Germany. And then um, down, if you go to the next uh, slide, um, actually from the national to the state level and then the super regional level where we, as I said, we have um, not so many projects um, and they are not as officially, um, as official, I think, as in, in Valdemar or uh, with the Chiba. Um, so, um, and then we have the regional level where you have all these um, DMOs that are listed there, which also, all of them have a, have a um, small, um, Region, smaller or larger region of the Elbe. So, and also at the local um, level, some towns and cities also have their own tourism organizations and they also, of course, do their own marketing and their own infrastructure planning. Next, please. I think this is it. Thank you. We can't hear you, Camille. Sorry. 
It's yes, uh, thank you, Alexis. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we don't have any questions for now, so we will now go to the next presentation uh, in Kaunas. And I'm sorry, I don't know why the picture is the same, but the, the floor is yours. We can't hear you, Vite, but I have activated the, the microphone and I, I'm not sure why it's not working. Um. Uh, good morning. Uh, yes, it's working now. Yes, it's working. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Vilita and I'm from European Capital of Culture in Kaunas. So we are preparing the huge program uh, in one year. We're gonna start this grand year. And also I'm not um, kind of a representative of managing authorities. So that's why today I will uh, try to present you very briefly, you know, uh, our two areas, which actually we participate with them, with Kona City and Kona District in the Star Cities project. So um, talking about the destination management, it needs to be said that re the representative power of municipalities is the municipal councils and the executive power is the municipal administrators. So. Uh, the first territorial unit is the Kaunas district. So this is an uh, administrative territor territorial unit in the middle of Lithuania. And according to the data uh, of 2018, the number of its residents, it's around uh, 93,000 uh, and it's growing rapidly. And the municipalities plays in a circular manner around the city of Kaunas and the urban situation in Kaunas district is a special one. It is within uh, the range of influence of Kona's metro me metropolitan center. And Kona's um, city is uh, the second largest city in Lithuania, um, located uh, the central part of the country. And also according to the data of uh, 2017, uh, the number of its residents is around 300,000 and the landscape of Konas is formed by uh, uh, unique natural conditions. The city uh, is um, at the confluence of two largest uh, uh, Lithuanian rivers. So this is Namunas and Neris. And uh, in the historical part of the city, architectural landscape is actually uh, originally supplemented by picturesque slopes. And in the sixth decade of the 20th century, when the um, hydroelectric power plant was built, the largest um, artificial lake in the Baltic countries was formed and we called it Kaunamaros. And it became a recreational space for the uh, residents of Kauna city and district as well. Um, so, there is a wide network of public spaces used by cultural events in Kona City. And Konas is um, at the center of the country, easily accessible by all means of transportation. So the city is at the confluence of international air and uh, land roads. Uh, next slide, please. And talking about the river management, uh, so the estate enterprise inland waterways directorate so this institution is actually under the Ministry of Transport and Communication of the Republic of Lithuania. So, it, it, and this institution is the administrator of the inland waterways of national importance. Uh, the enterprise administers and operates the inland waterways overseas and uh, performs their maintains, creates appropriate conditions for navigation in the um, inland waterways of national importance. Uh, and the main activities of the enterprise are, for example, making a fairway of the inland waterways of national importance. Also, it's cleaning works, uh, river uh, bed regulation with hydraulic engineering constructions, aiming to form the fairway to the, um, of define the parameters. Uh, and um, also they're building um, shipbuilding and repair also mapping hydrographical network of uh, Republic uh, of Lithuania and uh, doing the service of maintenance of the infrastructure. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Um, and then going to the local level of public governments, so it is need to be said that actually Kaunas city and Kaunas district municipalities, they carries out and coordinates riverside infrastructure projects. And for instance, there are um, new projects in the Kaunas Island Park. Uh, it is um, a plan to develop the territory as a cultural and scientific hub. So uh, they, um, they will just, you know, about to start to build the Chulonis Concert Center, which will be a multifunctional project. Um, and also planetarium, uh, interactive labs and conference halls, workshops and other spaces uh, are also planned on the Science Island. And also uh, 10 years ago, the, the Jalgiris Arena was built and it is the, the largest indoor arena in Baltics. Um, and also two bridges are also planned, which will connect the historic and modern city center with other major attractions. And um, next slide, please. Uh, and also talking about the um, river tourism management at the national level of public uh, governments. Um, so uh, the State Department of Tourism under the Ministry of Economy administrates the main processes of tourism development in the country, also carries out tourism projects financed from European Union structural funds. Uh, on a regular basis, development is in the country and, um, uh, and, and so on the regular basis, international and national tourism tendencies are analyzed and Lithuania tourism statistics is provided by request, but it's uh, also need to be said that uh, the same as in Hamburg, for example, uh, in, in Kaunas and Lithuania, there is, there is no kind of no river tourism strategy. Um, so, uh, and next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, also talking about the river tourism management, but uh, on the local level, so uh, we have two tourism offices, the Kaunas Tourism Information Center uh, of Kaunas City Municipality, and we, um, so this, the name of this information center is Kaunas Inn and Kaunas District Tourism and Business Information Center of Kaunas District Municipality. So actually um, implements tourism policy and develops marketing processes in the municipality. And here, um, if it's possible, um, uh, Camille, I would like to ask you to show a video uh, of Kaunas Inn. So this is actually the basic um, uh, tourism video, but here you can see that the major part is dedicated to the river tourism also. So, a bit, but I think that we cannot hear anything. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, the next, the next one. And um, so the organization of Kaunas 2022 um, uh, actually aims at the union of cultural organizations and creators in the Kaunas region, uh, Lithuania and Europe for a common goal a process that reveals the diversity of uh, European cultures and our um, local identity in it, which will be involved local people and partners from various sectors and a wide community-based um, activities 
and artistic program is also concentrated to the river area. Uh, for example, we support the independent initiative team TACA, which is a cultural river research platform that has been operating since 2016 in Kaunas city and Kaunas region. And the group's activities are focused on soft cultural revitalization initiatives, uh, river memory research, and the stimulation of creative process in the rivers of the Kaunas region, which involves local communities. And there are many other activities our team and partners are involved, which has a potential to grow into the annual festival so far. So for instance, um, uh, trying to bring all the target groups um, uh, river tourism actors uh, participating in the star cities as as well as expand the network of uh, potential partners. The public event, um, as you can, um, you already probably saw in, um, uh, in a video. Um, so it was held on 22nd of August last year. And let's celebrate the river. It actually was an event. So this was the title of the event uh, created by the Kona citizens themselves. So there was water sport activities with the kayaking, inflatable rafts, paddles, and other water vehicles. Uh, and uh, the road combined culture, art, um, sport, and community. And events and games took place at the points created, so riverbank areas, which could be reached both by bicycle and on foot. So uh, also uh, a massive program is already planned for the opening of European Capital of Culture along the rivers from May uh, 2022, including, of course, international exhibitions, performances on water and etc. So I think I finished. Um, Thank you, Vilte. Uh, Alexis, do we have any question? No, we don't have any question. Okay, so let's move to the next uh, presentation. Okay, no, no launch of the video. <laughs> and uh, we will go now to, uh, uh, to Slovenia and to uh, Ljubljana uh, region. Natasha, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, but the first uh, part will be presented by my colleague from Tourism uh, Ljubljana, uh, from the Tourism Office, so Irina Germank will present it. And then I will speak about river uh, management. Okay, so Irina... Uh, yeah. yeah. Hello, hi. Hello. So, so as, uh, as Natasha, Natasha mentioned, uh, I'm, my name is Irina Gurmik and I'm a regional destination organization coordinator at Ljubljana Tourism. So today I will present you the uh, RDO of Ljubljana region or the regional destination organization of Ljubljana region uh, story. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please, where the introduction slide is prepared. Okay, so for starters, um, what is the regional destination organization of Ljubljana region? I prepared uh, a map of Slovenia for starters, so we can imagine where the Excuse region me. lies. Excuse me, Elena, uh, yeah? can you speak uh, closer to your micro? To my microphone? Yeah, okay. I have this mic, so... Ah, uh, yes, answer? it's okay now. Okay. <laughs> it's better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do you hear me? Yeah, okay. So where were we? Talking about the, the where, where the region lies. So actually, the regional destination organization was, um, well, it's one of the, it lies in the central part of Slovenia, it's also known as the central Slovenia region or Ljubljana urban region. Um, but the regional destination organization was um, established within the uh, Ljubljana tourism um, public institution, that is the DMO, uh, which also functions as a regional destination organization and is responsible for promoting and supporting the development of tourism in the wider Ljubljana region. Uh, it consists of 26 municipalities in the vicinity of Ljubljana. Actually, this year there has been a change because one of the municipalities uh, has joined another region. So up to this moment, it, it hasn't been decided if it will uh, still form a part of the RDO of Ljubljana region as well in the future. Uh, and Elena? Yeah, I'm sorry, we, we don't hear you uh, very well. Um, 
Yes, I, I think you we we need you to we need to speak very close of your of your mic okay. to be Is sure of okay? understand. Is this okay if I speak like this? Uh, yes, it's a little bit oh, better. So I will just I will just put my mic here. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Normally I just use this microphone and I, I don't have any problems. Okay, so I was talking about the municipalities that form a region, and uh, actually, as I've mentioned, it's the most densely populated statistical region in Slovenia, or so. Uh, so let's go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> Um, so um, it's uh, geographically speaking, um, it's there's a, a wide range of geography that the region covers. Uh, I've just prepared some photos in the next slide, so we can just move from one slide to another, please, uh, to talk about them. But the main tourist points, for example, are <clears throat> starting to be done. Is the capital, of course, and it's also one of the one of the municipalities that um, forms the region. And then, if we move to the next slide, to the south of Ljubljana, the Ljubljana marshes. And on the next slide, we'll see. Uh, one of uh, it's actually the biggest botanical garden in Slovenia is the Boritum Bolshi Potok, and uh, then Pernes Novikia. Thanks. Uh, it's like the highest, um, the highest spa actually in Slovenia. It's one of the, I think it was the first eco spa um, in Slovenia also. Um, and near the Pernes Novik spa, there's this treasure of the Kaplanina pasture mountain, which uh, is really a unique place in uh, in Europe. Uh, because it has managed to preserve individual pasturing, so uh, it really attracts a lot of tourists. And moving to the next slide, we'll see the Kamik, this is the town I live in. It's a little town just beneath the Kamik and Savina Arts uh, near the Vilika Planina pasture mountain. So be sure to pay us a visit when the travels will be, will be possible again. And moving to another side, there's uh, not only natural heritage, of course, but also cultural and historical heritage in the region. For example, here we can see Boko Gradis Manor, and on the next slide, uh, Bugnishberg Manor also. Um, there are, uh, there's a lot of offer also on, on considering the cultural heritage. And for families and with young kids, for example, on the east part, uh, the east part of our region, there's so-called Gales Adventure Park. And um, something new, for example, in the next slide, we'll see the Sita Redis mine uh, near Lucia, uh, which has also developed um, its own product to, to offer to the tourists. So this was really a, cool, a really uh, quick overview of the main tourist points. Um, and now let's go to the, to the background. So um, how, did, uh, how did it all start, I should say it like that. Can you hear me okay now? Yes or no? Yes, yes, it's not, oh. uh, it's not very, uh, not yeah. very well, but uh, it's quite okay. <laughs> okay, I will try to speak a bit, a bit louder. Yeah, maybe perfect. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So um, after the finance crisis in uh, 2008, of course, there were several challenges um, for tourism worldwide and also in Slovenia, of course. So um, of course, there was no um, regional destination organization of that, uh, at that time. So the Argo Pizano region was established within the framework of the public tender for obtaining funds from the European Regional Development Fund, as you can see in the slide. And actually the main objectives, um, the main objective was to promote the region, to, to make it more visible. Um, and it's, uh, that's uh, something that also coincides with one of Liliana and main strategic goals, and that is the dispersal of tourist flows from the city center because the area of the Lugana region represents the green hinterland of um, Slovenia's capital city and offers excellent opportunities for the marketing and further development of products. As uh, rural holidays, discovering local culture and cuisine, and we do also focus on, on hiking and cycling, as I will, I will uh, talk about later on. So one of the objectives, of course, um, was not only the promotion and uh, to make the region more visible, but also to strengthen the networking and joint planning, joint marketing of tourism and of tourism project. project. Let's move to the next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, so how is it all financed? I guess you are wondering. So the annual budget from all 26 municipalities is about uh, 1,400,000 euros per year. Um, and we have to add extra 25,000 euros per year from uh, 2017 on when the new position within the Ljubljana tourism was established. Uh, that's the position of regional destination organization coordinator. 
So um, the city of Ljubljana, as the largest municipality, actually provides 24, a uh, 74, uh, excuse me, percent of the funds for the operation, and the rest of it, so the 26 percent, um, the remaining municipalities. So um, how the how the costs are cut? It, I guess you are wondering. The preset for cost cutting is based on the number of inhabitants and the number of um, uh, tourist beds in each municipality. And um, the sources of financing come from the tourist tax and from the city gambling fees. So each year there's an RBU forum that's held normally at the end of the year, where the coordinators of all the municipalities of the region meet. Um, they talk about the realized um, activities in the current years and also get to know the plan, the action and the financial plan for the, for the year ahead. And as you can see, the annual plan is also confirmed once a year by the Council of the Ghana Urban Region, um, which has been supported by the Regional Development of Agency of the Ghana Urban Region. And I think later Natasha Marshall will also uh, talk about another project within that region. Okay, so if we move to another slide, all our activities um, are based on the <clears throat> one key document, umbrella document, we also call it. It's the Tourism Development and Marketing Strategy in the Central Slovenia region. And uh, our main objectives, besides promotion, to make the region more visible, um, are well, the, the development, development of new projects. Um, and we do uh, focus on sustainable development and sustainable mobility. And uh, that's why we, for example, are developing green tourism products like cycling, hiking, and so on. And one of the main objectives is also coaching or trainings. We do organize several trainings a year for, uh, for, for the stakeholders, for providers of regional providers, and so on. And um, we have been quite successful um, because we do help them uh, with developing um, in their localities also. So um, what were the results? Let's move to another slide, please. Um, so the, the region, the, the cooperation brought good results um, because uh, actually we've, what we've, we are seeing is that the Arlo Ljubljana region achieves uh, greater recognition and visibility through cooperation. So the results show higher sales with less investment on the international tourist market where, for example, individual providers would not be competitive nor attractive. So um, since 2017, where, when the RDA coordinator was employed, more than 25 new projects, for example, have been developed and promoted. Um, as I've mentioned before, several training sessions are organized each year. And for example, a lot of, tour, a lot of um, uh, foreign journalists also visited the region as their uh, to, to see to see what the region has to offer and to present the offer also in their home states. Um, so as mentioned several times, we still and will be focusing on green sustainable tourism activities like hiking, cycling, active recreation, and from this well not from this year but this year it's really important uh, the fact that uh, Slovenia is uh, European gastronomical the capital of gastronomy in 2021. 21. So um, we are um, putting a lot of focus also on gastronomy. So if we move to the next slide, please. Um, some of our main promotional activities, as I've mentioned before, um, we do present the region online on our webpage, visitigana.com. Uh, for example, there's a monthly newsletter that we prepare um, with all the providers from the from the region that put letters from Ljubljana. We do advert. Uh, the region in, in different, um, for example, culinary magazine and food magazine we distribute our content on touristic um, platforms. We do help uh, local stakeholders with event promotion and we do promote the region at region fairs in Slovenia and abroad. And as mentioned, we, we organize different study tours for home and foreign journalists. And in the past few years, we have been including the content also that region offers on our social network. Um, for example, there were two really successful Instagram campaigns in the past two years. Uh, I've just put here two of them, Treasure Hunt of Center Slovenia and the one with Slovenian influencers. So if we continue, um, one of the um, activities or one, one um, 
area of the activities are also the development activities. As mentioned, um, they are, all the activities are based on the sustainable, uh, sustainable approach. So uh, we have been developing high finance ranking products as well as green products in the past years. For example, one of the really successful products um, or projects, I should say, is the so-called green supply chains. Um, the main idea of this green supply chains is to connect the provider, the farmer, the farmers with the uh, local schools, uh, restaurants, um, hotels, and so on. And of course, that also has to do on development of the gastronomy products. And as mentioned before, and I, as, uh, what I see is really important um, are also the different trainings and workshops that we have been organize, uh, organizing. Just now, for example, at this, the moment we are preparing a, a workshop on uh, how to or how to prepare a virtual experience, a virtual tour, just to have um, our local um, providers of tourism experiences to, to, to have more visitors, of course. Okay, let's move to another slide, please. Mm, what are our key guidelines for the future? Excuse me, Edna, uh -huh. you need to finish uh, quickly to give the floor for Natasha. Okay. Yeah, and here I am, I'm finishing. So we will still be focusing on product development and visibility of the region, and our focus will remain on the sustainable tourism and gastronomy. So that's all from my side. I hope that you have heard it all well. If you have any questions, please address them. Uh, to Irina Dr. Gurmik at Tourism uh, Ljana Dr. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, uh, after Irena presented the regional destination organization, uh, in our region, I would like to say a few words about the river management in the Ljubljana urban region or central statistical region. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, officially, there are only two levels of uh, governance in Slovenia, the national one and the local one. However, we have also the regional level um, uh, in, in a sense of um, uh, having 12 statistical regions and each of them has its own development uh, regional agency uh, performing tasks in uh, for gener uh, general de development of the region. But let's go to the river management. Um, uh, at the national level, there are two ministries responsible for Slovenian waters. One is uh, the Ministry of the Environment and Spatial Planning with its uh, three bodies uh, that monitor and manage the, uh, all the rivers, including, of course, the Ljubljanica River, uh, while the protection against natural and other disasters are uh, 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 the responsibility of the Ministry of Defense with its administration of uh, civil protection and disaster relief. The next slide, please. Uh, and uh, there are certain, uh, there is certain legislation uh, about the river management. And uh, so uh, there are two acts uh, speaking about uh, inland waters uh, and uh, de uh, determining navigation and the condition of ports and embankment uh, points, uh, as well as um, uh, prohibitions are stated and for instance in the water act there is also the uh, um, the statement that water resources are a natural public good and the transport of goods and motor vehicles is prohibited on water sources unless otherwise specified then we have a maritime code that determines the size of vessels and rules of navigation. And based on this legislation, uh, some regulations um, or later on, we will see uh, also on the local level decrees uh, uh, have been uh, adopted or um, uh, uh, prepared, so to say, uh, and um, this regulation on the use of motor uh, uh, powered vessels uh, 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 defines also the navigability uh, of the Ljubljanica River. It determines the sections where the, the navigation is possible or actually permitted, uh, what kind of motor vessels uh, uh, could be used, uh, types of motor drives or, or 
or speed limits. Uh, at the moment, the river of Ljubljanica is navigable only in the center of Ljubljana. That means approximately 4.5 to 5 kilometers. Uh, uh, but uh, not further um, towards the, the spring because uh, or from the spring to Ljubljana uh, running from or flowing through three other municipalities uh, because uh, it uh, flows through the uh, Ljubljana Marsh uh, Nature Park which has a special regime and because of that uh, Directorate for Water requires uh, additional um, measurements uh, and uh, like uh, bathymetry or macrofeed zero imaging. Uh, so based on these uh, conditions will be um, defined uh, uh, when, how, in which season uh, the, the river could be navigable still further because there are possibilities for additional 20 to 22 kilometers uh, of the river to be uh, navigable. Uh, could you please move the slide. As I mentioned, yes, there is no, uh, I already mentioned this, we can go further to the local level, yes. So, um, as I mentioned, the, the local level uh, uh, of the governments, these are municipalities, uh, 25 in uh, our region, but only uh, four um, being now uh, uh, in, in uh, along uh, the uh, Ljubljanica river, so I'm mentioning only these four. Uh, and these municipalities are also responsible for management of uh, the Ljubljanica river and uh, its uh, river banks. Um, and uh, so 15 years ago, the city of Ljubljana adopted the decree on determining the navigation regime on the Ljubljanica River, and there have been several amendments since then, uh, and uh, different uh, public entities uh, take care of different um, uh, aspects of the river. For instance, one takes care of all traffic related to the river navigation regime, as well as of embankments, uh, uh, embankments, sorry, uh, along the river and uh, the, the port on Ljubljanica uh, and, and uh, the city department takes care of the safety of navigation in the navigability area. So please, uh, the last slide. Um, uh, I mentioned before that regional development agency runs the uh, or performs the general uh, development in the region, and so uh, our region, uh, um, uh, our development agency, uh, uh, pre uh, led the project in, on behalf of of these four uh, municipalities, and this was the expert basis for for the navigability of the Ljubljanica River. And the main results were um, the proposed amendments uh, to the existing legislation and uh, also some local uh, to some local regulations, as well as guidelines for arranging the navigable way and uh, navigable way management plan. And uh, this is uh, about the river management uh, from my side. I would just like to uh, to say that also for uh, for the tourism uh, management, we have uh, three uh, levels um, of management, uh, national, regional and local. The national level is the Slovene um, um, Ministry of Economic Development and Technology with its Directorate for Tourism uh, and uh, the, the main uh, organization promotional but all uh, uh, it's Slovene tourist board and then we have a regional destination um, organization Irena presented one of it uh, one of them sorry in our region and of course lo at local level is um, at local levels uh, there are municipalities uh, uh, also having their own uh, documents and uh, just to be informed. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Natasha. You're welcome. Uh, so uh, now we will have a short coffee break. So I propose you to uh, to meet at uh, 10 and um, uh, 50 to start again with the two last presentations of uh, of the morning. 
there was a question sorry, I didn't see it. from Misha. <laughs> yes, from Misha, but uh, maybe maybe you want to ask uh, to answer it now or later. Uh, I think we can ask now, and uh, okay. and anyway, we will start again at uh, at uh, fifteen. Okay. So, um, Misha was asking, how is the uh, Ljubljana River position in a new Ljubljana tourism strategy, which was prepared in uh, two thousand twenty and two thousand twenty one. Maybe we have to unmute uh, Irina and Natasha. Uh, yes, I would, uh, because this is the new strategy for Ljubljana, uh, I would suggest uh, for the next period uh, that uh, Irina says, but um, t tells more about it. But uh, according to what I saw, there was no uh, really uh, directly, uh, let's say, a chapter uh, dedicated to the Ljubljanica River. Uh, 